Hello, this is video lecture on VLSI testing and testability and today's topic is fifth part of BIST. In the last tutorial, we discussed the third block of a BIST, third block of built-in self-test that is output response analysis. In a typical architecture, we have test vector generator, device under a test and output response analysis. So last tutorial we discussed about output response analysis. So instead of storing the complete output, we will store only the compressed form of the output and we will compare with the expected one. So there are totally five techniques, compression techniques. So we discussed four. They are ones count in which we will count instead of storing complete sequence, we will store the total number of ones. Next one is parity checking. So here we will store parity, whether it is a odd parity or even parity, we will store only the parity. Next one is a transition count. Here you will store number of transition from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. And last one is syndrome checking. A syndrome can be calculated by k by 2 power n, where k is number of min term, n is number of inputs. So using that method we can analyze the output response okay, but each one has one demerit that is called fault masking i had explained in the last tutorial so in this tutorial we are going to study the last method remaining that is signature analysis we will take one example and one more block we are going to study that is misr it is nothing to do with the output re response analysis method, but this is a structure which is used, which is typically used in any BIST architecture. I will explain this later. Miss MISR that is multiple input shift register. So signature analysis. It is invented by HP. What it does is it detects errors in data stream caused by hardware fault. It uses a data compression technique to reduce long data streams into a unique code called signature. So instead of storing complete data, we will store only the signature. So how the signature is created? The signatures can be created from the data streams by feeding the data into an L bit LFSR. In the previous method, we saw that signature generated either by counting number of ones or transition or parity or syndrome now here in this we are going to calculate a signature which is implemented using an lfsr a typical setup is shown here so here this is the xor gate here n bit shift register lfsr we already discussed it's a linear feedback shift register it will contain d flip flops and xor gate so here you will feed the output output of the circuit that is the input for this block next you will take a feedback from any of the shift register with the xor and that will feed the data and feedback consists of xoring selected taps of the shift register with input serial data that is this one but here how the signature is determined after data stream has been clocked through, a residue of serial data is left in the shift register. This, reduce, this residue is unique to the, to the data stream and represents its signature. That means consider an example full ladder. Full ladder we have 8 possible output for C out and for some 8 possible output. So what we will do is, we know the input, input sequence we know, we start from 0, 0, 0 to 111 so output for carry out will get 0 0 0 then 1 then again 0 then 3 times 1 so that sequence will apply first and after passing through 8 clock pulses what is the remaining what is the residue in the shift register that corresponds to signature of that sequence so next time when in the real time when we whatever data we observed, whatever output we observed, again that will be passed through this shift register and we will see the residue after 8 number of clock pulses. 
so if residue is same then the there is no fault in the circuit so that's why we have start and stop so after finishing this we will see what is the residue in the shift register we will take an example we will then we will understand this so find the signature of a system a fault free output response is this triple zero one zero triple one and faulty output response is this so here faulty output is the first bit instead of zero we have one using the lfs lfs are given here the each cell represents d flip flop so what is this one there are it says shift register with four flip flop and first flip flop gets the information of what input xor with third flip flop output input xor with third flip flop output that will feed the first flip flop and each flip flop has obvious synchronous clock now initially assume LFSR is content is 0000. So, this is the correct or fault free response. So, initial state is 000. Now, how to find after first clock pulse, how to find the data of shift register? That is, first data is the last whatever state is there, that is 000. In that third bit is XOR with present input, that is 0. That is fed to the first flip flop and other three are shifted so in this case this zero is xor with input zero and given to the first bit zero and these three zero are shifted similarly second data third data fourth data you see this one is xor with the third flip flop that is zero zero xor one is one and first three zero are shifted here Similarly, next 0, x or 0, that is 0, and 1, 0, 0 shifted. Next 1, 1, x or 0, that is 1, this 0, 1, 0 shifted. Next again 1, 1, x or the previous third flip flop output, that is 1, that will be 0, and 1, 0, 1 is shift. And last output, <coughs> that is 1, is x or with 0, that is 1, then 0, 1, 0 shifted. So, after 8 clock pulse the residue will be 1010. Zero, zero. Now, if there is a fault in the circuit, if we get the response like this and initial state again 000, zero, zero then if you calculate, you can find here the final residue will be triple one zero. Okay. Again, you verify if there is any uh, mistake, let me know. You correct it. I think it is, I have calculated correctly here. So, whatever obtained the response here this is not matching with the expected one so we can tell there is a fault in the circuit however there is a one demerit here that is an n stage signature generator can generate 2 power n signature so that means 4 bit signature generator can have 16 possible signatures if the length of the input sequence is m then signature generator has and signature generator has n stages then 2 power m input sequence map into 2 power n signature what does it mean we have here m is 8 output length is 8 if, uh, signature length is 4 so that means output possible combination is 2 power 8 256 and shift register possible here uh, signature possible is 16 so you are mapping 256 possible output sequence to 16 signatures so what happens then so only one out of two power m possible out input sequence is error free and produces the correct signature however any one of the remaining two power m minus n minus one sequences may also map into the correct signature so that means 256 sequence you have actually we should have 256 unique signatures but you have only 16 signature so that means many output sequence map to same signature so if there is a fault also there is a possibility that the fault will be masked the signature what you obtained will be correct even though the output sequence is faulty so there is a chance that here while finding you may find the faulty and fault free both signature are correct 
so why it is because 2 power n output data mapped into 2 power m sorry 2 power m output sequence mapped into 2 power n shift register so if you it can be reduced by increasing the shift register uh, shift register length but again uh, there is a trade off either you have to increase number of bits or you have to compromise the uh, error detection rate okay next one this one misr this is a typical block it is uh, similar what we have lfsr it is similarly to the lfsr but in lfsr you will have only one data you can see here lfsr input is only one and other one is feedback and given like but misr you are you can give eight data parallelly you can give eight data and that is XORed with the shift register you can see here and this is the block uh, the selected tabs of the output are XORed and fed to the first one so this is a typical example of a multiple input shift register where it can be used we will see in the next tutorial there we will see different BIST architectures so we have considered individual block of the BIST architecture that is output sequence uh, sorry test vector generator and output response analyzer now we will see all in one block so typical architecture we have in which we will find all output response also analyzer also and test vector generator also so we will see we will study two architectures so in that this will be useful so what is the what are the uses here one you can see it can generate a random sequence because whatever output you get here in the flip flops that can be used as a test vector generator that can be used as a test vector generator similarly it can be used to used as an uh, um, parallel signature analysis so here signature analysis only one data we are taking so eight input you can take and simultaneously you can detect or sorry you can determine or produce a signature so parallel signature analysis also can be done so we will see this application in the next tutorial okay that's it